Hello my beautiful MK Love fam, welcome back to another episode. If you're new around here, my name is Melanie Kate Love. I'm an international childhood trauma healer where I help you to heal that emotional pain that you've been holding on to for quite some time and I help you to break that cycle of abuse which will allow you to feel this unconditional inner freedom where you wake up each morning and you will just know what you need to do to take care of yourself and when anything pops up you have the awareness on how to deal with it. So today we're going to be talking about the chakras, in particular the root chakra. Now over the next seven weeks I will be releasing one video a week helping you to understand what exactly is each chakra and how do you know where it's located and what does it mean when it's blocked. We talk explicitly into what that looks like in terms of the chakra blockage being excessive or deficient and what it looks like to be balanced. There's so much involved in it. I'll also be reading some tarot cards for you at the end, helping you to deal with the energy associated with each chakra. So I really hope you will enjoy this amazing series. If you have any questions for any future videos or anything that you would love clarified, please comment them down below. All right, the root chakra. Now, the root chakra is an energy center that's located at the base of your spine. It is responsible for your safety, your security, your living situation, and it basically is the root of everything in your life. If you have a blocked root chakra, there is, it's like you're living in survival mode and you're not able to progress. Now, it's actually connected with the element of the earth grounding, earthing yourself. Think of it like a, like a tree. You're planting a seed into the, into the ground and it begins to take root. That is giving it the foundation for it to shoot out and to branch off to whatever delicious goodness it has in store for us. So think of the root chakra like that. It's that grounding center. Now, in terms of looking at the root chakra in when it's blocked, let's look at the um, the deficient side. So this is like two different forms of the scale. You could be deficient or you could be excessive. Let's take a look at this. So on the screen right now, you can see if you're deficient, this means that you could be in fear, in depression, have anxiety, are insecure, have difficulty manifesting and resist structure. What's coming up for you right now? If we go to look at the other side, if we're looking at excessive, then this could look like you're sluggish, overweight, materialistic, you could be a workaholic, you could be a hoarder. There's so much involved in this, but if you're wanting to balance your root chakra, this is exactly what it's going to look like in your life. You feel safe, you feel secure in your own home and really every aspect of your life. You are physically healthy, you have a positive body image, you're financially stable and you live in the present moment. So to help you connect the dots looking back in terms of your root chakra being blocked as a child, did you grow up in a household where there was violence, where you were scared, where you needed to protect a family member? Um, and because of that, you felt like, oh, you know, like there was anxiety around the situation. But now as an adult, you could be triggered by any anger or aggression, which is me, totally. If I see anyone who's violent, um, depending on how, eight, how old they are, I would wanna stop them. Like I saw a kid at the beach the other day being rude to his sister and trying to drown her head under the water and I just went, I was like, hey! You know, I was like, I just, I cannot watch people being in those situations where they're being hurt. If it was somebody older, then I would probably go into the fearful stage going like, I can't protect this person. So just think about everything that's happened in your life. You know, it's, we go through such a journey and sometimes there are days where it feels blocked when we go into fear and depression and there's an anxiety. And then there's other times where we're like, okay, I'm feeling the emotions. I'm just, you know, just feeling them, not having to like, to, it's just acknowledging them. That's really it. It's acknowledging them and knowing, okay, what do I need to do to move past this? And this is what I teach exclusively in my coaching program. Each week, like the program's eight weeks, but the first week is basically setting up the foundations. <laughs> but the second session where we speak exclusively on the root chakra, we go through five different activities of what my clients need to do to heal them. 
Now it's very intensive. If you want to know how to actually heal them, then you'll need to sign up for my coaching program. But that's going to be a massive investment on your part because I only work with people who are ready, who are willing and are committed to doing whatever it takes. So if you're someone who, who has experienced childhood trauma and you um, may have noticed that you're manifesting or you had in the past manifested some really toxic, horrible relationships where you may have been fearful for your life, you know, you could have allowed someone to treat you like a piece of shit and you're going up and down the emotional guidance scale. I used to be in a four year toxic relationship with a narcissist um, who was super duper manipulative. And as a result of that, I started eating. Um, and it wasn't until I learned the true power of food and that's when I began my whole vegan transformation. It's documented on my YouTube channel, my first three years of my channel, I've been on YouTube for six years. First three years of my channel is dedicated, it used to be called Raw Nourishment, it was my channel. And I showed the transition um, about six months into my transition into eating vegan food, how it literally changed my whole life. I lost 10 kilos by eating whole ripe fruits and vegetables. I started exercising again. I lost 10 kilos before I even started exercising. Like food is literally 80% what you put in your body. It's 20% 20 ex um, exercise. There was so much involved in it. And there's so much that I could say, but what just comes up for you? Like what's triggering you right now? Just have a moment to think about it. Breathe in. Exhale through the mouth. Again, breathe in. Exhale. Whatever is coming up for you, just know that everything is divinely orchestrated. The past in which you went through all that bullshit, all that pain, that violence, that need for safety that you've clung on to, and you probably notice in your adult life that you're probably more protective of your home. Your home is your sacred sanctuary and you don't want people with toxic energy to come in because they're gonna fuck shit up. <laughs> That's why I never allow anybody to sleep on my mattress other than my husband and I. It's like, I don't want that energy exchange in my bed. I don't care who you are. That is like my sacred space. It's that what I can control. And I actually noticed from traveling um, the world last year with my husband, we were traveling for seven months and that constant, where are we going to stay? Can we secure another house here? Oh my God, where are we going to get food from? Blah, blah, blah. All of this constant jerking around. I constantly had a root chakra blockage for seven months last year. And that's when we got to the stage where we're like, oh, we're not nomadic people at all. You know, I got a little bit cocky. I was like, oh yeah, my business is making money and, you know, and I can work and live anywhere in the world. And you know, my ego kind of took over. It's like, oh, we're gonna to move to Bali. And we did that. And then we're like, oh, we're gonna to move to Ireland. And then we did that. And then we went to England. And then we got to the stage where we're like, I want to sleep in my own bed. I wanna decorate this house that makes me feel good. I don't wanna to have to constantly be like, having to cleanse the energy in every friggin' space we go through. And to feel like we need to bring our own towels because towels in most of these places just feel like cardboard. I want my own sheets. I want my own bed. I want my own plants to talk to. So to me now, after somebody who's experienced childhood trauma, it's taken me a long time to feel safe and comfortable in my own home. And I kind of feel like now I'm finally getting to the stage where I'm getting closer and closer and closer. And I know that the moment that we, my husband and I build our shipping container home, which is gonna be off grid, um, we're gonna have our beautiful children running around, we're gonna unschool them and living off the land with beautiful stream, you know, that will be my happy place when I can literally do anything I want to that space. And that's mine. And that's what, that's one of my dreams. It's on my vision board. It's what I'm working towards. Like being able to work with my beautiful clients, my beautiful coaching clients. I love helping them. Like it just fills me up so much. It's what I'm born on this world to do. But that money, that energy exchange is going to allow me and my family to be able to live the life that we want. And we're getting closer every step of the way. So think about that. <laughs> and then I heard that done. 
Uh, do you think about that? Now you know how I feel. So you can handle my love. Are you for real? I won't be hasty. I'll give you a t- If you really put me there, I'll say goodbye. Yo, I tell you what I want, what I really want to run. So tell me what you want, what you really want to. I want to, I want to, I want to. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that came up for this song. So maybe that's your anthem. I want to. What do you want? I want a home. That's, yeah. Depends where you're at. Maybe you've got the home, but you're like, oh, maybe I'm overweight. Depends on where it is. And it's interesting. It's interesting to be like, where are you overweight? Is it your hips and your thighs? Because that is linked to daddy issues. <laughs> interesting. I usually attract lots of women who, um, they're like mini males. They've experienced the same type of things that I have. So I hope this helps you out to give you a little understanding about what the root chakra is. What does it mean if you're excessive, balanced or deficient? And yeah, let's do some cards just to see what you need to know. We'll just do two or three. We'll see what just comes up for you. Angels, do my MK Love fam need to know about their root chakra? What do they need to know? This one? Ooh, okay, so we've got the Ten of Swords. Now, the Ten of Swords is somebody who has been through a lot. The Swords represents challenges, problems, trauma, and she's walking away, like, I'm walking away from the troubles in my life. I'm walking away. Oh, and I find a better day. You're walking away, but you're kind of walking away with like your head held high. You're not walking down with your head like this. You're standing up and you got to a stage where you're like, let the sky fall, let it crumble, and we will stand to and face it all together. Sky full. So you're you're allowing things to pass and you're just um wash away. I'm hearing so many songs. Every time you cry, save up all your tears, I will be your rainbow when you disappear. Wash away the pain till you smile again. Yeah, there's a lot. So there's a lot in which you're walking away from, but you've been, you've, the fact that you're watching this video right now shows that you've been through such a massive journey. You're not the 10. After the 10 is the night. And then we have, is it the night? Then the page and then the queen and then the king. So you're four steps away from ending this. So you've come a long way. Let's pull one other card. What else do we need to know for the root chakra? One more card. Ah. Oh, lovely, lovely. The Three of Cups. Hmm. And then I heard this, free of mind and the rest will follow. Three of Cups is sisterhood. So it's finding your tribe, finding your sisterhood, finding people that can lift you up. Love lifts us up where we belong. Yeah. I, I'm hearing so many songs today. This is amazing. <laughs> they help me kind of tell the story if I get a little bit stuck. So this is finding people that can help support you. These are people that are your soul tribe. If you need help, I highly recommend that you check out my brand new women's moon circle. Every full moon we join together. Um, it's the same time as we usually do uh, I release videos. So 7 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. That's like 10 o'clock. Um, British Standard Time, what time? 5 p.m. Central Standard Time the day before. I'll put it on. But if you want help to join together and feel that kind of sisterhood to help you, then I highly recommend you join the Women's Moon Circle. So it's every full moon we join together and we heal different elements based on the different signs of the zodiac. So maybe that's something that's going to float your boat, but you're doing really well. Honestly, you're doing really well. You're so close. Anyways, my love, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to know more, there's two ways that you can help support me and to help yourself. Join the Women's Moon Circle. It's $11.11. .11. That's Australian every single month. But if you're serious about accelerating your healing and you want intensive one-on-one -on -one support, then you can check out the link in the description, melaniekatelove.com forward slash free training, and it will link you to all the details about 
my coaching program and then we can jump on a call together. So I really hope this helps you out. Any questions, leave them down below and let me know, are you balanced, deficient or excessive? Literally write that down, balanced, deficient or excessive. Have an amazing day. I'll see you next week with the brand new video talking about everything to do with the sacral chakra. That's the pleasure center within your body. I love you, I love you, I love you. Goodbye.